We then uh, went to Sapo Chow Cafe and had a wonderful meal. They had prepared a, some hot pots for us that are very traditional here. And uh, we had some great food and then went for a hike because a lot of the girls that are going to Sapo Chow, a lot of people that are at risk, uh, at risk of being trafficked, are living in these areas and, and their main jobs they can get a lot of times is being a tourist, a tour guide. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. We read together. You'll be my guide. I had a 17-year-old guide and uh, she showed me where her rice plantations were, her family's plantation, and like how they live pretty much. What is this valley called? What? What is this valley called? Lao Chai. Lao Chai. Lao Chai. Yes. Lao Chai. Mm. We walked all the way down to the valley and we saw a lot of people walking up and down um, to either go to the market and stuff like that. And then we saw a lot of people with chickens, uh, a lot of dogs on the, on the street. It was a great day, you know, it was very, uh, it, it was very powerful. The, the, whole, the whole day was very powerful. So they, that's where the buffaloes uh, walk? That's where I walk. I walk with the buffaloes. And we visited uh, one of the guide's houses? Yes. That was very crazy, I mean, very. people live on, uh, on, on so little. They have their, their farm and they have what they have, their, their property and their animals, and they take care of themselves and, and uh, they live on so little. It's a completely different world. It's, yeah. it's a totally different reality here and, and uh, yeah, it just really... It's humbling. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. Hi, how are you going? Yeah. Nice to meet you. We had a very, uh, very serious and, and very informative conversation with, with the founders of Pacific Links. So my name is Diep Bong. I'm a co-founder co and pre president of Pacific Links Foundation. And uh, this is uh, Ji Tao, um, who is our program manager. And she's the, the coordinator for our reintegration programs. The girls that are at our shelter are um, have been trafficked for sexual exploitation or they've been sold as wives. And so basically, usually they cross the border and they're given a choice. Some cases they're given a choice, either to be sold into a brothel or to be sold to be somebody's wife. And, and you know, this is under duress and under, you know, threat and being beaten up. So some girls say to themselves, um, I'm going to choose to be in this brothel because the brothel is right at the border and the selling them as wives, sometimes some of them are sold all the way near to Mongolia. Better chance of escaping probably if, uh, if they're close to the border, they figure they have a better right. chance to escape. Right, so that's, that's what they, they figure. Every single girl has a story, and so there's this uh, young girl, a young woman, the whole life she was growing up in a very high mountain. Uh, it took a long time to get to her house, and she has never had shoes. She said she had always dreamed to have some flip-flops when she was very young, has that little plot. Um, she was planting corn, but that little piece of plot of land never yielded enough money for her to buy a pair of shoes. So the friend who uh, tricked her to go with him was the guy who gave her her first pair of shoes. So, um, you know, a year and a half ago when she came to, to a shelter, she was so shy and so bottled up, she just absolutely were not able to, to communicate at all. Everything was surprising to me. You know, we're kind of like from a different place because we, like, we have no idea that such a terrible thing can happen and it's not part of our reality, but it's, it's part of all of their reality. So when the, the young women come back, uh, they have a lot of dreams still, and they have a lot of hope, but they also have a lot of fears. So the first thing that we need to do with them is to make them feel that this, this is a safe place. We work with them uh, with regards to what they hope for, what they want to achieve, and their personal uh, aspiration, and then we'll design something, or you know, we'll try to assist them to, to follow that course. So in your opinion, what are the best ways for someone at risk to protect themselves against human trafficking? I think that the, the most important for us, uh, uh, the, the message for us is, uh, from us, is that you have to remember that anyone can be a trafficker. It could be somebody you know, and that everyone could be at risk of being trafficked. It was very, uh, it was an eye opener over the last few days uh, to learn so much about the types of exploitations uh, surrounding human trafficking. Um, obviously, we know about uh, forced uh, sex work, 
Uh, what was more surprising was um, human trafficking derived uh, for uh, labor. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing all this with us. You think that the kids or, 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 or girls are a little more prone or a little more vulnerable, but it happens to men too. Thank you.